Um, the Chicago Blackhawks are one point up on the Montreal Canadiens. Now, we talked about Chicago <laughs> last episode. And let me just context this for you because I don't even think I did it. I didn't think it, we'd sink to these depths. I thought they'd win. I thought, you know, it was, you know Kane, there's 1,000 silver stick night or whatever it is, yeah. even though he played it last year. Um, and, and, you know, they're back at home and things are good, except they're not. Uh, remember, this is a team that got booed off the ice in their first game. First game of the season. Fans back in the building, and they were booed off the ice. Then, the head coach, actually before that, was booed during announcements. Hey, here's Jeremy Colleton. <laughs> and I'm looking at the roster. I had to look at Dom Dom Lecision's predictions this morning, and it's looking like he was pretty close. He had them finishing 23rd or something like that. It might be 32nd, but... Right now, the Blackhawks, who I'm like, they should be better, right? They're, they not. shouldn't be this bad. Right. So, yeah. again, I want to ask the question, and I said it sort of last episode. Is it just sometimes where you see, like I remember in the 90s, the Tampa Bay Rays signed a bunch of people like Move On to a bunch of expensive contracts, and it didn't really work out for them because they didn't know how to play as a team. Is it that Chicago has a lot of new players and they're just gelling? Or is it just not, you know, did they put their money in the wrong places and it's not good? They're one of the biggest wild cards in the league because how is Seth Jones going to fit in? Yeah, yeah. How is Jonathan Taves going to fit back into a team that he hasn't been part of for a year? How are they going to adjust to life without Duncan Keith? Uh, I know he's taken a step back, but, you know, in the locker room. How are they going to adjust to... Mark Andre Fleury mm-hmm. in net, and how is he going to adjust to them? You're going from a team known for defense to a team that hasn't had any for about half a decade. That's a tough one. Mm-hmm. Um, you got guys coming off of injury like Calvin DeHaan. Um, there's obvious uh, roster upheaval like Dylan Strom. They basically. <laughs> let out once every five games yeah to, to bring cat was on the third line well and, yeah. and i think that's why fans are are kind of done with colleton but here um, as someone who hasn't been fantasy fuck off taze stop that <laughs> taze um said today well when we play jeremy's game we get results and i wondered if that was just the captain sticking up for the coach who's under fire that's that's mm. hockey robot talk yeah no that's that's hockey robot talk i would love to get him in private and be like but really well, and how many how many years do they have to go? Like, has it been three and a half, four years since they fired Quinville? Mm, no, Less couldn't than be. That. Really? No. Two? No. I feel like it was at the beginning of the season that was doomed by the pandemic. Yeah, let yeah, me see. Nineteen see. season. Uh, he was fired fifteen games into eighteen nineteen. Oh wow, that's three years. Time doesn't. The time it's, space. Yeah. Time is my. I was now, looking up both this are fair. Stat, and they were, by the way, they were six and six at that point. So they were, they were 500. Yeah, it was about his time ago. I was looking up the stat I saw earlier, and it was that the Blackhawks have been outscored 15 to three at five on five through their first four games of the season. And that's uh, can, second worst. Can I worst. just point out for the new fans, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's second worst in the league. The Kraken have only allowed more goals at five on five, and they've played an extra game. And it just, like, defense seems to be the number one issue, but I, I'm not sure if it's the, I guess it's just twofold. It's the defenseman not being able to play uh, good stay at home defense, and then the offense not being able to play uh, good defense against their forwards and not being able to transition into an offensive game. Like, the whole defensive structure seems to be just a giant hole here in Chicago. And I feel like that's what they tried to solve in the offseason. Mm-hmm. And that's where they're completely failing. If if So, I saw one of the goals last night, and Seth Jones is literally right there. Yeah, and he hasn't had a good start. And it's like, and you just think, man, again, it is overreaction season. I get it. But if he does, if he doesn't figure this out, this could be one of the worst contracts we've ever seen. If the analytics nerds, Love, if they're right, if they love dunking on someone, they've got their ultimate dunk choice, and they're going to have a highlight reel of Seth Jones getting turnstiled a couple times, allowing a few goals, just running on Twitter all season long. Now, do you think they're dunking on Seth, or are they dunking on the guy that offered him the deal? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
God, we've been doing a show together for a long time. <laughs> you guys are in sync today. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the answer yes it is the answer but it's, like, more the, right. it's more the offerer of the deal is it not it's because i don't it's think like, like it's it's it, because with analytics it's like you didn't listen to us so now we're coming for you it's like right the which is fair it's like the hockey world <laughs> said seth jones and zach Wierenski are good at this for long enough that everyone believed it and now they both make nine million dollars like it's what both of them both of them it's so rarely that there is a Shea Weber Ryan Suter situation because they were they were both teammates, they were both on the same pair, and they both went and got their money because both were extremely good. Mm. But then we took Seth Jones and Zach Wierenski, which at no point ever had the reputation of those two, <laughs> and we're like, all right, here's you're now two of the highest paid defensemen in the league. There I've never go. seen two guys come from a team that never won have <laughs> such thing. high reputations. It's not like these are championship guys who have had deep yeah. runs in the playoffs. Columbus hasn't done jack shit yeah. in their franchise. But no, oh, they got you to the beat the round. Leafs. Congrats. Hey, Everyone hey, has. Hey, Shut hey. up. They <laughs> here's what they did. Tampa and nothing. Here's what they did. They swept Tampa and then they surprised the Leafs in consecutive years. That's what it was. That's and true. Seth Jones was playing 86 minutes a game oh, here. because well, they didn't have anybody else. That's all stand in silence as we watch that banner go up to the rafters. That's what happened though. You know it. that's why. And, uh, Blow that away in the wrong. wind from the cannon. And, like, <laughs> you know that's why though. That's exactly why. Is that once, let's be straight, and no offense to Blue Jackets fans, it's not personal, but when you put, when, when a team's in the playoffs, there are more eyeballs on it because there are less teams available to watch it, right? Mm -hmm. Fair? Brandon Dubinsky's reputation in was, he, he almost shut down Crosby once. The the here's how here's how effective that Columbus two year run was. The Leafs traded for Felino overhaul. Ooh, Adam, you know, like that's that, we're all just that, gonna have a good yo, Friday. Talk about get, like listen. Everybody has a you know. Listen, I think we have a time. smart GM, but yo, the Columbus got in his head, and he got bullied. We we all saw, we saw that on AON. Yeah. Okay, um, I don't want to revisit that. Yeah. Well, here oh. we we can end it with this. Did you watch the Amazon documentary and have more faith in Kyle Dubas? Oh, are you saying you? Okay, don't? so that's a no with your face. What's your answer? <laughs> I I respected his ability to handle d tough conversations. That's yeah. for sure. Like we're talking about Mikheyev and and VC and to make and the stuff. team better. Um, I that's a no as well. Uh, no, no, so, no I, 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 so we have three no. Neutral, neutral. I think that. I'm neutral that's, on that too, and yeah. I think I think what it has to do with the fact that everybody knows that it has nothing to do with the pieces that Kyle Dubas can bring in or not bring out anymore. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to do with that. It's all about the guys that were already there. 